let me give you a simple type of problem involving the triangle inequality. So the problem is like, find a number m such that this weird function of x and y is less than or equal to m whenever x is in this range and y is in this range. So this is a really typical type of problem. Like, I give you a function of x and y, and I ask you to bound its absolute value, so find an upper bound for the absolute value of this function, subject to some constraints. And you might be concerned about, hey, there's an x minus 1 in the, in the denominator, so I'm dividing by 0. But actually, the division by 0 only happens when x equals 1, and that doesn't fall within this constraint. So there's no division by 0. Okay, so the key ingredient to this problem is the triangle inequality. So let me say something about that. The triangle inequality states that if I have two numbers, x and y, and I add them and then take the absolute value, that's less than or equal to if I took the absolute values of them individually and then added that. So this inequality is true for all real numbers, x and y. And if you know something about vectors, you can say, some, you can say a visual thing about like a visual interpretation of this. So let's say I have a vector x, and then I have another vector y, and I attach that to the tip of x. Now, if you know anything about vectors, you know that if I just start at the, at the uh, tail of x and I go to the tip of y, that's the same as just adding x and y. Now, the question is, which path is shorter from, say, a to b? Well, if I stop at this point in the middle, that would be like going along x and then going along y. And if I go directly, that's just the same as going along x plus y. And clearly the shortest path from a to b is the straight line. So x plus y has a shorter length than the sum of the length of x and y. So this is kind of a visual interpretation of the triangle inequality. Let's try to prove it rigorously. And what I'm going to do to prove this is square both sides. And since both, the, both of the numbers on each side of this are non-negative, that's equivalent. So we'll prove the equivalent statement that um, x plus y squared is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y all squared. Right? And you might ask, oh, but weren't there supposed to be absolute values here? But that's not a big deal because I'm squaring it anyways. And when you take a number, let's say c, and square it, that's the same as taking its absolute value and then squaring it because squaring cancels out the negative side. Any Squaring would cancel out any negatives anyways. Okay? And so when you square something, when you square sum, a plus b squared, let's say, remember this expands out as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So there's a squared, b squared, and there's a cross term here. So what I'm going to do is start with that cross term. So let's say x times y, so start with x times y, that's just some real number, and any real number is less than or equal to its own absolute value. So x times y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x times y. And absolute values split up over product, so this is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y. Okay, and now I want it, remember I want it to look like this expanded thing, so I'm going to have to add an x squared and a y squared to both sides. Let's give that a shot. So x squared plus xy plus y squared, add that to both sides, so I have x squared plus absolute value of x times absolute value of y plus y squared. And now another trick, I'm going to use this equality again, that c squared is equal to the absolute value of c squared, right? I can just insert the absolute values here, and that doesn't change whether I'm doing x squared or the absolute value of x squared. So this is equal, it's the same to put absolute values around. Okay, and now I can factor both sides. So the right side is x plus y squared, and the left side is the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y squared. And this is what I said I was going to prove. Now the way it gives the the way it gives the uh, triangle inequality the way we stated it originally is by taking square roots. I can take a square root here to finish it off. Okay, 
So, um, yes, let's take square roots of both sides. And here I'm using the property that if I have two non-negative numbers and a is less than or equal to b, then I can take the square root without reversing the inequality. Okay, now how do I take the square root of a square? Well, that's the absolute value, right? The square root of a squared is the absolute value of a. So on the right side, this becomes the absolute value of x plus y. And on the left side, this becomes the absolute value of the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y. And, well, the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y is already greater than or equal to 0. So I don't need the absolute values here. I can just write this as the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y without the big absolute value outside. And that is exactly the triangle inequality. Okay, nice. Now, I'm, I'm going to need a second version of the triangle inequality that people call the reverse triangle inequality. Reverse triangle inequality. And that's when I take the absolute value of a difference instead of a sum. So the absolute value of x minus y versus the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y which of these is bigger, it's the one on the left. So it's reverse from the usual triangle inequality where the one on the right was bigger. And so I'll give you a little idea of how to prove this. Well, I can start with just the absolute value of x, and then I add in, well, I subtract out a y and add in a y. This is a little trick that when you see it once, you should try to remember it. Just add and subtract y. Now, the triangle inequality applies to a sum, the absolute value of a sum. And here's what I have, an absolute value of x minus y plus y. So by the triangle inequality, the normal one, this is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y plus the absolute value of y. And now all I have to do is bring this absolute value of y to the other side. So in total, I have x absolute value of x minus absolute value of y is less than, or, less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y. So there we go. Two versions of the triangle inequality, and we're going to need both for that problem. So let's go back. So remember, what I'm trying to do is find a bound for this function given some constraints. So let's try to solve this thing. Okay, so the first thing to do, the first thing to do is try to split up the inequality. Well, not, not the inequality, split up this function, right? Because on the top I have a sum, and I can bound that with the triangle inequality, but the triangle inequality doesn't help me with denominators, so it's best to split this up. So let's write it as the absolute value of x squared minus 3y plus 5 over x minus 1. I can split this up as just the absolute value of the top times 1 over the absolute value of the bottom. And so now I have two kind of mini problems. Let's call them a and b. And let's try to bound. So the strategy is to bound a and b individually and then I'll combine my answers to get the final m the final value for m here okay so let's start with a this one's not so bad I just directly apply the triangle inequality so I have the absolute value of x squared minus 3y plus 5 now by the triangle inequality well okay let me express this as a sum x squared plus negative 3y plus 5 because right? now it's the absolute value of a sum of three things, and the triangle inequality works for three things too. So I can say this is less than or equal to the absolute value of x squared plus the absolute value of negative 3y plus the absolute value of 5. Now obviously I can simplify this a little bit. 
um, the absolute value of x squared is just uh, the same as the absolute value of x squared. The second term, I can just take this negative 3 out, and it'll become a positive 3 because I'm taking absolute value. So this is plus 3 times the absolute value of y, plus, and then the absolute value of 5 is just 5. Now I can use what I know about x and y. The absolute value of x is known. It's given to be less than or equal to 4. And the absolute value of y is given to be less than or equal to 7. So I can say less than or equal to 4 and less than or equal to 7. So in total, this whole thing is less than or equal to 4 squared plus 3 times 7 plus 5. So 4 squared is 16 plus 5 is 21. 3 times 7 is also 21. So 21 plus 21 is 42. Okay, nice. So this is what I can use for A. So how about B? So how do I bound x minus 1? Well, this is an absolute value of a difference. And remember, when I have the absolute value of a difference, I can use the reverse triangle inequality. So this is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of 1. And of course, the absolute value of 1 is just 1. So I can write this as the absolute value of x minus 1. Now I know something about the absolute value of x. I know it's bigger than or equal to 3. So why don't I use that here? This is greater than or equal to 3 minus 1, also known as 2. But my issue, I've got an issue now, right? I, I showed that the absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 2, not less than or equal to 2. So it's a lower bound, not an upper bound. But I'm not done yet, right? Because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to bound the absolute value of x minus 1. I'm trying to bound 1 over the absolute value of x minus 1. So a lower bound is actually helpful here. Because what I can do, so I've, I've proven that the absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 2. What I can do is take reciprocals of both sides, right? So take reciprocals now. And when you take reciprocals, you should know that the inequality gets reversed. So inequality reverses. So when I flip everything, 1 over x minus 1 absolute value and 1 over 2, the inequality sign goes the other way. And now I have an upper bound for the absolute value 1 over the absolute value of x minus 1. So this is what I'm going to use for b. And now I can combine these together. So put these together. So let's write down everything now. x squared minus 3y plus 5 divided by x minus 1, all absolute value, is equal to, as we said before, the absolute value of x squared minus 3y plus 5 times 1 over the absolute value of x minus 1. And now I know each one of these I have a bound for. This first one I proved was less than or equal to 42, and the second one we proved less than or equal to 1 over 2. So this whole thing is less than or equal to 42 times 1 over 2 which is 21. So then you can write a concluding statement. That's my value for m. So m equals 21 works. And 